Council Member Groves? Here. Council Member Chambers? Here. Council Member Salzbeedle? Here. Council Member Yankovic? Here. And Mayor DeBoer? Here. Consent agenda for tonight. Oh, I'll make a motion for you guys. Council Member Groves? Yes. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Salzweedle? Yes. Council Member Yankovic? Yes. And Mayor DeVore? Yes. Public comment. Uh, old business number A. Oh, all right. For the record, my name is Josh Langdon. My address is 5033 Montcalm Avenue, Northeast Belvin, Michigan. And I'm a pastor at Bible Believers Church. Last time that I was here, I gave a handout that was disgusting, at least to most of us. I would like to give you all something else tonight that isn't of that nature. This is just one of our church gospel tracts. It can tell a person how they can know for sure that one day they will be with God up in heaven and how their sins can be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I, I appreciate you letting me give this to you. We, we just said the Pledge of Allegiance, and it still says, under God. And I'm going to try not to preach at you the whole time. I do have a point for being here tonight. You know, the last time I was here was the Saturday after the Pride event. And I've been preaching the gospel in public for the majority of my adult life, or all of my adult life. And um, I'm used to the confrontation that, that people, like the, the people that attend the Pride events or the organizer Pride events, have towards preachers of the gospel. Um, but actually the bias that I felt from Mayor DeVore and Leah took me by surprise a bit. Uh, that elected officials had that much of a bias towards the LGBT agenda and against biblical Christianity. Um, that did take me by surprise. <clears throat> but we were reviewing the transcript from the October 16th meeting, and um, Mayor DeBoer at 23 minutes and 26 seconds said that he wouldn't want to be part of putting any policy together to address a problem that I don't feel exists in the first place. And I had just at the meeting after the Pride event um, shown you examples of loud profanity from the stand, uh, blasphemy, pornography that was passed out at the event, in addition to men dressed up in thongs and dancing sexually in front of children. So that concerns me that if, if anyone doesn't have a problem with that, I, I'm concerned. Um, Mr. Yankovic at 30 minutes and 3 seconds said, just to be clear, I'm not a fan of someone looking at a child and saying, if you're gay, you're going to burn in hell. You know, people tend to demonize us when, when we're out preaching the gospel, but when they meet us face to face, they find that's not what we do. That isn't at all what we do. And um, we don't walk up to kids and say, you're, you're going to burn in hell because you're gay. We, we, we give them the good news of the gospel that every person born into this world needs Jesus Christ and that he is the answer for everyone. But um, So it seems that almost the entire council has just taken this agreement that the real problem are, are the preachers, are, are the Christians. And I, I, don't, under, I don't understand that. I, I really don't. And um, continuing on. So at, at 45 minutes, uh, Council Member Yankovic said, maybe the protesters should be limited to a particular area. And I honestly got a chuckle, at it, like herding us into a corral like we're, like we're sheep. Um, obviously, that's not feasible or, con or constitutional. If the, public, or if the event is open to the public, then, then we can be there as well. Um, so that's not feasible. So I, I wanted to come today to say that if the event continues to be open to the public and continues to promote sexual perversion and the abuse of children, which is exactly what the LGBT movement is about, that we will continue to show up and preach the gospel at the event. 
You don't need any new, you're talking about new policies, you don't need new policies. You have 13-131 that is against indecent and obscene language. You have 13-132 that is against indecent or obscene conduct. And you have 13-133 that is against indecent exposure. All three of these things happen at every single Pride event. I witnessed it, I have it on video camera. And the Miller test is at your disposal to decide whether or not something is obscene. And that's been around forever. You don't need a new policy. You just need to enforce the policy that's on, that's on hand. Um, I don't understand people that defend drag queen shows in public with children present. I don't understand how anyone that has any kind of moral, moral character could actually stand behind what's going on, not just in our city, in our state, in our country, all over the world. Um, I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't think you have to be my stripe of Christianity to, to see that. And I'll wrap up quickly. Um, at the end of the last meeting on October 16th, the organizer of the Pride event admitted that the drag queen show was for adults, not for children. Yet it was open to the public. They said it was advertised for adults as having adult content, but the city and the Pride event allowed children to come. That's got to change. So why were children allowed to come if it was geared towards adults? These events are perverted and sexually inappropriate. They're degenerate. What's going on at these events? It, it's, it's wrong. Matthew 18, 6 says, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Romans 122 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God unto an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burden the lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly. The pride movement will not rest until their flags are flown from every flagpole in the nation, and any Christian that dares tell them the truth about their eternal soul is in prison. The LGBT crowd is anxiously waiting for the Michigan Senate to pass the expansion of HB 4474. They tell us this when we're on the streets. Okay, you're at five minutes, so i got to ask you to wrap it up here. I'm wrapping up in 15 seconds. And I just wanted to say, if you can keep children out of this event, out of the drag queen show, we will stay outside of the event. That is my compromise of the city. If you're able to keep the children out of the drag queen show, we will preach outside the event. So I'm asking for your help. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Uh, number eight. Um, the next step in addressing the matter at 990 North Washington is to, is to add 846 North Washington, 848 North Washington, and 1049, 1047 North Washington as park properties in the City of Lowell's Park and Recreation Master Plan. Additionally, this, re this request aligns with all of our objectives to facilitate the unilateral annexation of 848 North Washington, which is really 990 North Washington. So to show you what we're doing, the item in red, that would be the property that we would, we, that we would annex into the city of Lowell and become park property. The item in blue is property we already own that's in the city of limits but was never deemed park property. And the item above that's blue with, with a couple squiggly lines, that is the, um, that's the cabin property. For some reason, I don't understand why, but the cabin was not included in the park map, so I just added it. So, all of these properties plus all the property in green incorporates Scout, would, would incorporate Scout Park 
if we deem it as park property, and then the matter should be resolved. Um, it, once it's park property, it can't be sold without a vote of the people. The next step after that would be the unilateral annexation, which is the next agenda item. And then once that gets approved by the state of Michigan, then we come back and rezone those rezone the three properties as public facility. And then the matter should be resolved. So I'm recommending resolution 2023 to include those into the park recreation master plan. I'll make that motion. No support. Anything from the Scout Park Association? Just uh, real quickly. Yeah, I want to give you guys a chance before we go on. Uh, Bruce Matthews, uh, 326 Riverside, uh, representing the Lowell uh, Scout Park Association. Um, first of all, uh, a huge thank you. Uh, we think that uh, the process that was engaged in by the City Council, um, Mayor DeBoer and, uh, and Manager Burns, uh, you know, was uh, an, an exercise in civic uh, government that um, I think we can be proud of. And, uh, and we, as an association, thank you um, for for that process. We clearly support this uh, and, and to clarify because there's been some uh, discussion about the uh, uh, the addresses and the, the PPN numbers and this sort of thing. Uh, but what we're talking about here is is uh, the what was 848 which now is you're talking about is 990. We call it 990 but legally it's 848. Yeah. <coughs> and, and is, is, is part of this this process uh, what was uh, what is, is 846 um, is already included, if we're, or, or no, it will 846, be included. 846 was property that was owned by the city, right. but that was zoned residential, and we're putting that into the park, right. into the parks. Right, right. And 1049 um, has already been included as part of the park. Correct. The only one that hadn't been for some reason, I don't know why, it was 1047. So we yeah. added that. Yeah. So again, because of the confusion with the, the PPN numbers and the address and this sort of thing, just want to clarify and get on the record what we're talking about here. And uh, we certainly agree with that and, and support that. And again, thank the, the city for um, the efforts that, uh, that you're making to preserve and protect and conserve this property for, uh, for the citizens' use. Um, and, uh, and we look forward to working with you in the future on that. So thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Right. Motion, it's we have a second? Yeah, Marty. Okay. Motion and a second. Any other discussion on the first resolution? Sue. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Councilmember Salzwedo? Yes. Councilmember Yankovic? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. And Councilmember Groves? Yes. All right, that carries. Uh, next one is number B, annexation of D48 North Washington. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. As you know, we've been addressing the future of 990 North Washington, proper legal address 848 North Washington, for quite some time. Um, <laughs> you all right? Uh, <laughs> still, yeah. You don't have to remember the numbers after that. No. no. <laughs> all right. As we know, the property is currently located in Virginia Township and is adjacent to the city limits of Lowell. In addition, we've dumped, demolished the structure on the property. Having completed those actions, we are now in a position to unilaterally annex the property into the city of Lowell. This process does not follow the normal annexation procedures and can be achieved via resolution upon approval by, from the great seal of the state of Michigan. Attached is resolution 21-23, which would enable us to proceed with this annexation. I should mention that there may be some title work that needs to be handled administratively before we execute this. Um, however, this resolution should not impede us from addressing those administration matters. I'm recommending that the Lowell City Council approve resolution 21-23, which would unilaterally annex 848 North Washington into the city of Lowell, subject, subject to approval from the Great Seal of the State of Michigan. I love it. Any questions for Mike? No, I'll make a motion. Yeah, what's the Great Seal? <laughs> it seems like we can balance a ball. <laughs> <laughs> we can do trips for you. It's, it's, I believe it's the Office of the Governor. No. Correct. All right. <laughs> Any truth to that, mm -hmm. Councilman? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 21 23. I'll support her. Sorry. Sorry, I know we did. <laughs> motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Sue. Councilmember Salzwedo? Yes. Councilmember Yankovic? On behalf of SEALs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Chambers? Yes. 
Councilmember Groves? Yes. And Mayor DeVore? Very happily, yes. All right, that carries. A uh, letter of understanding with the Rotary. Mike. Yep, city administration has been working with Teresa Mott and Cody Chambers from the little Rotary Club on the reconstruction of Creekside's Kingdom. They are leading the fundraising efforts, but we believe a memorandum of understanding is needed to move forward. Um, I've attached the MOU that addresses concerns of the Rotary Club and the city. The facility will remain owned by the city of Lowell, and the city will agree to seek DNR Passport Grant and other relevant grant opportunities. The city will handle maintenance of the new facility as we do currently. The Rotary will manage the social media page, and the city agrees to provide meeting space at no cost when addressing items pertaining to this project. I'm recommending that the Lowell City Council approve a memorandum of understanding with the Lowell Rotary Club for the reconstruction of Creekside Kingdom as presented. Any questions or discussion on that? I love these pro park mm -hmm. packets. Mm -hmm. Cody, that sound good? All right. Good. All right. Make a motion to do that. Okay. I'll support that. Any other discussion? Sue. Councilmember Yankovich? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Groves? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. And Councilmember Salzwedo? Yes. All right. Uh, number A, under new business, social district request. The city has received a request from Los Potolas. I think I said that right. Mexican Bar and Grill to be added to the social district for their new restaurant at 101 West Main. In order for Los Portales to receive a social district endorsement on their liquor license, they must fall within the district boundaries and be approved via city council resolution. 101 West Main does fall in the district boundaries and attached the resolution for consideration. If approved, I will request the city manager and city attorney address any clerical issues which may occur in dealing with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission with this resol resolution rather than having to reissue a re resolution if they require changes. Um, I recommend approval for resolution, resolution 22-23 to allow for Los Patales to participate in the social district and 101 West Main is presented. Is that real plan owner? It was the old yeah. real plan. I believe the owners are in the back. Yeah. Real plan wasn't in yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Basically, yeah. but yeah. What it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. trans. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the same thing clip I had to do. Yeah. Except you were allowed to vote on this. Yes. All right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to uh, approve resolution 22-223. And I'll support. Any other questions? Sue. Council Member Chambers? Yes. Council Member Groves? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Council Member Salzwedo? Yes. And Council Member Yankovich? Yes. Reason through. Uh, number B, Planning Commission pay Michael stipend. Yep. I'm ready to request your consideration for an adjustment to the stipend provided to members of the Planning Commission who serve the City of Lowell. Specifically, we propose increasing the stipend for Planning Commission meetings to $45 per meeting to align it with the stipend provided to the Lowell Lake Power Board. Currently, members of the Planning Commission are compensated at a rate of $35 per meeting while we greatly appreciate their dedication and commitment to our city's planning development, we've observed that the stipend has remained at this rate for an extended period of time. In contrast, members of the Low Lake Power Board are compensated at a rate of $45 per meeting. To maintain fairness and equity across boards, various boards and commissions within the city, it is essential that the stipend rates are consistent. The Low Lake Power Board plays a critical role in overseeing the city's energy infrastructure, just as the Planning Commission has a significant impact on city's growth and development. By offering the same stipend to both entities, we can ensure that the compensation reflects the dedication and responsibility of our planning commission members. Increasing the stipend to $45 per meeting will only be a fair resolution for the, of the effort put forth by planning commission members, but will also hopefully attract and retain individuals with valuable expertise in planning and development. This adjustment will demonstrate our commitment to valuing the contribution of all boards and commissions equally. Uh, I will not provide a recommendation on this, but. Policy yeah, board. That's a policy council decision. Yes. I'll make a motion that we approve the stipend increase for the planning commission. Except for Marty? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I didn't say that. So. For all the planning commission members. I'll support. All right. Any other discussion? Sue. Council Member Groves? Yes. Mayor DeVore? Yes. Council Member Salzwedo? Yes. Council Member Yankovic? Yes. Council Member Chambers? Yes. All right, keeping it moving. Uh, city holiday. Yes. At the request of Councilman Groves, I was asked to have a discussion about our observed city holidays 
and to, and to decide if any changes were needed to be made regarding the recognition of certain specific city holidays and to seek guidance on whether to continue the current practice in place. Um, I've listed three holidays. Uh, the first one is Martin Luther King Day. The city of Lowell recognizes Martin Luther King Day by not having a council meeting, but our offices remain open. I was asked to see if we wish to continue this practice. This approach ensures that our city respects and observes this important holiday, which celebrates the life and achievements of Dr. Dr. King. Please advise if the city council wishes to maintain this practice or if there are any other proposed changes or alternative arrangements. Juneteenth. Uh, in recent years, Ju Juneteenth has gained widespread recognition and has now become a federal holiday. Um, we would like to seek guidance on whether the city should consider recognizing Juneteenth as an official holiday. Um, the last one would be Veterans Day. Veterans Day is a federal holiday that obviously honors and celebrates the service of all United States military veterans. As a consideration, the, kids, the city could choose to recognize Veterans Day, possibly by providing a day off to city employees who are veterans as a show of gratitude for their service to our nation. Um, would like to engage in the discussion to see if you want to make any changes. I don't. The only thing, like I, I think we should observe all three, but providing the day off to city employees who are veterans doesn't account for if they are married to a veteran or the child sure. of a veteran or the brother or sister of sure. a veteran. And I don't think, I think if you're going to close it, close it uniformly okay. for everybody. Because yep. you don't know what people have sacrificed outside right. of just dedicated service. Sure. Um, but I think we should recognize them all and be closed for them all. But I, I'm not opposed to it, but again, we just reduced our opening days to two, 52 days. Um, so when we're all said and done, we're, like, we're open less than 200 days a year for the rest of the general public to come in and be able to do business within the right. halls of City Hall. Um, another thing we need to take in, when the, the schedule was originally written for holidays, um, low light power was also considered into that so that the offices would be joined. I found this out one day at coffee with council and previous. So there's also some consideration to think about low light power and with the holiday schedule. Like I said, I'm not opposed, but this gate coming less and less days that we are open to serve the community. So, and, uh, so, so some of the things is obviously that has not been finalized for four times. We were, we were going to discuss that in just a Yeah, exactly. But I have a feeling it's going to continue. I, I have not. Years. Yeah, I have not seen Same. any staffing yeah. issues. Yeah. Or, Zero. We have, Zero. We've had no service yeah, issues. Yet. Um, my thought process would be a couple things. One, um, for example, um, obviously if, 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 if this is put into a union contract, that's a different conversation. But my one thought process would be is that if if the holiday is on a Friday, we don't observe it. It's it's just the regular day off. And they brought up, and for example, uh, Good Friday is a perfect example. Um, we've already worked a 40 hour week. If that changes, right. so that's technically not an observed holiday. And, and we lost no, where if that week was normal, it'd be a 32 hour work week where it's still 40. Right. Um, President's Day would be another one I would, I would recommend actually bring keeping City Hall open on President's Day. And then let's say, for example, a lot of times now, like, we would have, um, we would observe the 4th of July. If, let's say, you know, if, if 4th of July falls on a weekend, we usually observe it on a, right. on a, on a Friday or a Monday. We yeah. probably wouldn't do that anymore. Um, and uh, we wouldn't, and depending on how Christmas falls, uh, sometimes, like, for example, this year, the 26th and 27th, I believe, are the days we have I'm sorry, no. Monday. The 25th and 26th. Christmas, I'm sorry. Monday. Yeah, yeah the 25th and yeah. the 25th so. we would observe. But going forward, the, the thought process would be is if, if Christmas happened on a Friday, we would, I mean, well, Christmas had happened on a Friday, say, so we'd, we'd, we'd obviously observe Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. They'd only have one day off rather than two days off. Yeah. And then the following Monday, we would reopen. Um, so I'm looking at it from, from yeah. that angle to try and. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's coming more than a good point. Yeah. I no, I just want to, yeah, I just want to put it out there yeah. and thanks Lee for bringing them up and yeah. considering that those three days. And I, well, I think that it was Martin Luther King uh, Day that I had noticed that um, we were not having a city council 
community on that day, um, which is fine. I'm happy to observe the holiday, um, but then we were not observing Juneteenth. We had a meeting on Juneteenth. Um, so if we're going to recognize one federal holiday, I think that it's important to recognize all of them in the same manner um, and give them all the same respect. So that was my only point to bring it forward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No it's a nice little old business. Board and Commission reports. Cliff. I have nothing for you, sir. James. I have not a good point other than uh, next month, uh, December 5th or 4th, we're meeting on the LCTV for the first time meeting, so it's around the corner, but they're not. I think it's Pearl Harbor Day. December 7th? Something like that. Why is it for Arbor Day? Is <laughs> that I did know. <laughs> All my meetings are coming out. But, uh, I have none. I don't need the fire authority. It's Thursday this week. My manager report. Yeah. Um, Monroe Project. Um, the road the road's been paved. Uh, they're still just doing some restoration work. They'll probably be doing something even up until the spring. Um, the biggest issue right now is the parking lot. Um, if you've noticed, ponding in a couple spots. Um, from what we sense, the contractor put too much too much asphalt down. So um, the plan for to get us through the winter months is there. Um, Williamson Works is working with CL Trucking. They're probably they're, their plan is right now to put in two leach basins to catch the water and have it go down, catch the storm sewer. Um, the plan would be then in the spring to um, to repay it. Um, at no cost, none of this is any cost to the city. Um, Thursday, we are planning on striping a lot, at least through the winter months. We got a very cheap price to do that, so we're going to do that, um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep you informed as to what's going on there. Um, the little township water, um, we did have to update both estimates. Um, I. I've um, given those to the city attorney to give to the township. Uh, the biggest issue was we didn't have, um, we didn't include any sort of groundwater storage and um, place for the, to connect generators that would be needed for the facility. So those were both added to both to both proposals, and uh, I've sent that off to the city attorney. Um, August 24th, the storm event. Um, if you recall, um, the governor declared a state of emergency for Kent County trying to um, allocate funds for the event. Um, the issue at hand is uh, the state cannot do anything um, with, the, with those funds to declare funds until the federal government decides that they want to uh, include that as a, as a national state of emergency. Um, once they make that decision, then um, we, in addition to whatever state funding would be available, there could be federal funding. If, that's, if the federal funding isn't going to come, then the state would come with, come with, basically come with whatever they offer. But until that's decided at the federal level, we will not hear anything about any reimbursement. you got any idea what that reimbursement might be? Basically what they've told us is most likely overtime, uh, but it has to be $30,000 in overtime. However, it could be possible because with light and power in the city, okay. we may have racked up. I haven't, I haven't really checked with Charlie, but I would, but they could be included. Okay, in. that makes sense. But they, that was, that was preliminary. They haven't said okay. anything yet. So, but that's when I, when I talked to the county, shortly after the storm, the biggest thing was yeah. tractor overtime. It's not big enough to pay off the debt on the roll. No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Um, the Formby Street project, um, we did receive small urban funds for the fiscal year 24 through the state of Michigan, um, 300, I believe it was $385,000, uh, only be about a $90,000 match for the city to, to mill and fill from Beach to G Drive. Uh, the state has asked us to uh, move that project to the fiscal 25 year. Um, I didn't see an issue with that, so we just did. Um, and so that would be allocated in 25, uh, 25 probably for us to be fiscal year 25, 26. Um, I'm looking at finding a way to add Jackson to the 24, 25 street allocation. The good news is that the excise tax could be higher this year. Um, state sales statewide were $2.7 million, according to 
state reports that I found. So if you do the math, if, if you do the math, uh, I have an estimate of about fifty-seven thousand dollars per facility. So that ranges anywhere between. If they if they only count eight facilities, it's about four hundred fifty thousand dollars. And if they count us for all nine facilities, it's like five hundred thirteen thousand dollars. We budgeted two hundred fifty thousand dollars in excise this year. Um, so until I won't know for certain until the spring, but at least my estimate is what that when it comes up to about fifty seven thousand a facility. But I also don't know what the state's going to take. The state does take money off the top, obviously for their administrative costs. And I don't know there was money that was supposed to be set aside for um, studies for soldiers with uh, PTSD. I don't know if that's been completed yet. Um, so if that happens, that fifty seven might be a little bit less. But we, but the it, the, um, the the sales went up about six hundred million dollars more than they did the year before. So it, it it's gonna you know it, it, even as the facilities number of facilities start dropping, which you're starting to see statewide, I don't see the sales numbers going down. So who knows? Um, Washington Street, um, we did submit the water and sewer plans to Eagle last week. We should be getting those. To look at administratively hopefully later this week um, the fairground fencing I mentioned to you before that we were uh, trying to uh, ascertain the fence we made a deal with the, uh, the, the youth fair um, they had a they had a uh, HVAC repair that was needed in the King building however since they're vacating it after the end of the you know, end of the year they asked us that it was roughly the same price as the, what they were going to charge us for the fence so we just did a swap and we took care of it um, and then lastly, uh, there will be a joint meeting with Lowell Lake Power on Monday, the 20th of November at 6 p.m. City Council meeting will follow afterwards. Uh, we're discussing IT and uh, um, funding for the airport. Board. That's all I have. Um, when we repave this parking lot up here, can we stress to them it needs to be done on a Monday? Because of all of the grief the business has had to go through. I can mention that, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, and that's the reason. Well, our Chamber of Commerce might object, but that's all right. Very close. Mm -hmm. Speaking of IT, did, did you send the, was that a scam email about, oh, I'm trying to think of the topic that we all got. I did not open it. Oh, the works. I never sent yeah. scam emails out. It didn't have your name on it. It didn't come from my I never it sent it out. It came from the city of Lowell. I, I did not open it. Okay. If, you're not sure, if you're not sure of something, don't open it. I didn't. I'm just saying. I will tell you that our service does provide them. I don't know when they provide them. Okay. They don't tell me. Yeah. Um, on the fairgrounds, are they tearing all those buildings down? The barns, it's everything but the reed barn, yes. Great right part of the King building. I'm, I'm taking a deep breath. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Balls is. Sorry, I got a moment of silence for balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, after 50 years? Um, 52. 52. Yeah. Um, they're selling. Um, the, the museum, Mike. Uh, yep. That is a city owned building. Yes. I think we've, we've allowed them enough grace time to come up with a different design. Mm -hmm. I would like to see us just. Get it done, preferably before the end of the year, because it's it really is an eyesore. And yeah, they were. Um, I know last week they were they were going to be submitting plans to put some stairs in. Um, they just had to get approved by building officials, so they are. I know they are working on that. But I also have not gotten an, an updated estimate for the for the extra for the extra work work that they want to do. Right, but how long? I mean, how long do we give them? Right. Yeah. Needs to just get done. I agree. And they're going to use their contingency fund to pay for anything, correct? I believe so. I, I, I believe it's come in significantly under. So I still haven't gotten the amount yet. So I don't know until I until I see it. Yeah, they're not telling me anything either. So. Well, maybe they should be. Anything else for our nope, illustrious city manager? Uh, appointments, Susie did a ton of work for me on that last week. So now we're up to the 2024 vacancies. 
Mr. Mr. Kent is here tonight. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Gonna, we need his leadership on that, so I'm hoping he takes it. LCTV board? Continue. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Any objections? You can go do it to his face after the moment. Good. He, he doesn't um, have any job. Fire authority, I can, talk, I can take care of Thursday. Lara, I can talk to Perry. There's some resignations, so if you want to get involved, we need two on Arbor Board. One on Airport Board, Construction Board of Appeals. Who else resigned? Oh, uh, and Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah, I added him to the airport. Say. Would you like to continue on the Building Authority? Sure. Well, well, you do now, my goodness. <laughs> now you do. Yeah, yeah. The Construction Board of Appeals, if anybody wants to be on it, we've met twice in 11 years, so it's not a high-stress job. <laughs> But when you meet, though, it's high stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hardest 15 minutes to go through. All right, um, council comments. Cliff. I got nothing. Jim. I wish uh, everybody the best tomorrow during the, the election. And uh, it's, uh, I did hear from somebody that they've never seen so many signs out during an election as, as this particular election. So uh, you know, that's off and good luck to everybody. I put mine out, too. Why well, I'm sitting around up there by now. Hey, Eddie, I'm a big hand this front guy. Oh, it's me? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so I always find it unfortunate when somebody comes to speak uh, and then calls me out directly and then leaves. Um, so that is unfortunate. However, I'm going to address it. Um, my allyship to the LGBT plus community does not make me a biased council member. It makes me a human rights activist. Being an advocate for fair, equal living for all is the very reason I ran for council. Why I believe the local citizens voted for me. Flip my page, I ran out of room. <coughs> um, personal, beliefs are, personal beliefs are the beliefs of everyone, so no, I don't just serve Christians. Though I do do my part in protecting the right to practice religion, which is the practice of your chosen belief system. I do, however, serve the citizens of Lowell, and I will always do my due diligence to make everybody feel as safe and protected here as I possibly can. And if that means calling somebody out um, for their objections and judgments, I will do that every single time. That is it. Good job. Yeah, really good job. Uh, we were at, uh, oh, everybody, good luck tomorrow in the elections. Uh, we were at uh, Traverse City for uh, MML classes, and one of the keynote speakers was showed a video, and they're really cool, and I asked Mike if this is something we could look into, and I did look into them. Those stencils are cheap. Mm. Uh, what they did is they have all these different stencils you can buy, right? Like. Uh, all kinds of sayings and stuff, and you take this waterproofing spray, it's environmentally friendly, it doesn't hurt anything, and you spray it on the sidewalk. And you literally, during the sunny day, you never see it. But when it rains, all of a sudden these uh, sayings, or my personal favorite was the, the, the frogs with lily pads. They all of a sudden show up on a wet asphalt, and it's really cool. They did a hopscotch one, um, I mean, how many kids don't want to play hopscotch and mud puddle, right? Because that's what they do. So it was really cool. Um, we can do this for less than a hundred bucks, and I think that's something. Yep, I talked to Rich about it and said they did that and was... We already have those applications yeah. for yep. Yeah. yep, that's what he said. So we could just have Cliff make us some stencils. Canadian flags. Canadian flags. All of this. <laughs> you didn't say anything about that gift during your council. Council comments. It was from the Canadian office. hockey team chipped in and got me this swell magnet. I had to go all the way to Trevor City to get that for you. <laughs> <laughs> we actually thought he got lost. He wanted to look for some weird candy. Too. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. I just. Hope everybody goes and votes tomorrow. I've made it. my thoughts on the candidates pretty clear, so and I hope that at least 
at a minimum, Jim and I have done enough to earn your votes. The library is on there tomorrow too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, the schools. That's important. That's so, pretty much a no-brainer. We would be voting in favor of having a reduction. reduction. <laughs> Yep, so get out there tomorrow by 8 p.m. Um, I thought there was something else. Oh, I was at Traverse City, too, yeah. getting Cliff a present and attending some continuing education for this position. And we took, Rich and I, Marty and Jim were in an AI presentation that went swimmingly well, right? Well, I, I like to comment on it because I, I don't think I didn't understand it until the next day when that other gentleman was speaking and talking about it, like, like how they painted the silos to, to match. And so when we went in to talk about AI, I'm thinking artificial intelligence and how does it affect the city and yeah. cybersecurity yeah. and all that, not being art. So, and plus the guy was extremely boring and <laughs> he lost two thirds of the crowd within the first 20 minutes, but besides it, but I didn't, I didn't think about it until after that guy spoke the next day. And it really isn't a bad idea. I just don't know where we would incorporate it in our, our city, whether there's a, you know, a side building that could be painted in murals and all this good things. But, but it, it did make sense, but again. Well, there's so, those tiny little buildings down there. Tiny? The so King Mill, because we don't have anything over three stories tall. Oh, <laughs> oh, I learned that earlier. <laughs> so, hey, sorry, Mike. No, don't be. I was. Uh, I sat in while they were hurting out like cat a lot of their conference. <laughs> I sat in on council manager relations, and the panel was fantastic. Brenda was on it. Uh, a couple other people from Westland. Um, and then an MML attorney. And really, really good to see that if somebody like the Municipal League, who does a fantastic job helping us learn and grow and get better and serve the residents, we've implemented probably 85% of the stuff that they're recommending. Transparency and communication and open-mindedness. And uh, it's really good to see, I don't enjoy seeing other communities struggle, but it's nice when you go somewhere with a reputation like that and hear that we're already doing a bunch of really, really good stuff. It was a council that had five of their seven members uh, facing ethics violations, and they don't have a quorum to vote on the ethics violations because too many of them are doing that. Yeah, you think we get it bad? Yeah, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> and, and I think we're ahead of the curve on, on from what I heard on yes. some of those things. When we talked about the rural, yeah. you know, we sat in that class as yeah. well too. Yeah. And uh, everybody wants wants that handout instead of what can I do locally and, and that part of it. So uh, I, I think we're ahead of the curve on quite a bit of the things we do. Yeah, I agree. That yeah. rural one had a really good moderator too. All that it was you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah, I did excellent. If I mean, not biased. Did great. Yeah, we couldn't sit in the front row and help him while he was doing it. Wrong. Leah and Jim and Rich absolutely could have sat in the front row. It was me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't have anything else to say. Uh, I look for a motion now to move to closed session to consider material exempt from disclosure by state or federal statute. Uh, Privilege legal opinion MCL 15 268. I'll make that motion and I'll support. Any discussion? Sue. Councilmember Salzito? Yes. Councilmember Yankovic? Yes. Councilmember Chambers? Yes. Councilmember Groves? Yes. And Mayor DeVore? Yes.